Hi everyone. I'm here to tell you that you don't have to eat kale. <laughs> I don't like kale. There, I've said it. <laughs> I admit it. The food industry has latched onto kale as some kind of superfood. And you can find kale salads, you can find kale on sandwiches. It's everywhere all of a sudden. It's the superfood. Um, but a lot of people really don't like kale. They don't like the taste of it. They don't like the texture of it. And, you know, if you like kale, more power to you. I mean, there's nothing wrong with kale. It's perfectly good for you. Um, I happen to not like it. And I know some people will get kale and they'll massage it and do all these kinds of things to, to make a more palatable texture. But, you know, there was a study done to conduct what is the, the healthiest foods in the world, the ones that were the most nutrient dense. And kale didn't even come out in the top five. <laughs> so... You don't have to eat kale. If you want to eat kale, eat kale. But I am here to give you 10 alternatives to kale. There are leafy greens that you can eat that are perfectly healthy for you that I think are a little bit more palatable. <laughs> so here we go. Number one, the number one superfood in the world is watercress. Lovely little watercress is the number one superfood. It really is the healthiest green on the planet. I love watercress. It has a light, peppery flavor, similar to arugula, but milder. You can toss it into salads. You can stir it into risotto and pasta dishes, blend it into smoothies. You can make these cute little tea sandwiches. You know, the next time you have the queen over for tea. <laughs> watercress is packed with nutrients such as vitamins K, A, C, B6, fiber, potassium, protein, calcium, magnesium, folate, beta carotene. <laughs> I am out of breath. Let's just say it's the number one superfood in nutrient density for a reason. Number two, Swiss chard. I adore chard. I love its mild flavor. It's similar to spinach, but it's a little more delicate. You can eat the leaves and you can eat the stem. So it's like getting two vegetables for the price of one. Chard can come with red, yellow, or white stalks. Sometimes you'll see mixed bundles in a supermarket called rainbow chard. I'm not sure why it's called Swiss chard. The vegetable is not native to Switzerland, but it is a Mediterranean plant. Number three, mustard greens. The leaves of the mustard plant are another great green alternative. There are several kinds of mustard greens. I first had mustard greens in a Chinese restaurant and I fell in love. It had tough stems with delicate leaves and a delicious flavor. I found a leafier type of mustard green in the supermarket that is a little easier to prepare and has a peppery flavor. I can't always find them in the store, but when I see them, I scoop them up. Dandelion greens. They may look like a weed and you may not like to see them on your lawn, but the entire dandelion plant is edible. The leaves are especially nice. They have a bitter flavor and can be used to wake up a salad. They can be cooked on their own, incorporated into pasta dishes. I've even enjoyed them with eggs. Turnip greens. You often see turnips on their own in the supermarkets, but the greens are also edible and they make a great side dish. Sometimes you'll see them labeled as turnip tops. The stems and leaves have a spicy, peppery flavor similar to mustard greens. Use them to zest up a salad or cook them to get a milder flavor. Collard greens. Collards have hearty leaves and stems with a texture similar to kale, but with a better flavor in my opinion. I love to use them as wraps and stuff them with things like leftover risotto. You can also chop them up and add them to stews and soups or eat them by themselves. They can be eaten raw in salads and slaws. They're very versatile. You can use collards in any recipe that calls for kale. Beet greens. Beets are amazing. You can eat the beet root and the greens. They come in red or golden. The red ones have a very strong color that can dye almost anything it comes in contact with. The beet greens are easier to handle. They have a similar mild flavor to spinach and chard. And when the leaves are young, you can add them to salads. When they get larger, it's best to cook them. Spinach. I love the taste of spinach. It makes a great salad green. It's also lovely cooked. Put it on sandwiches, make spinach fritters, add it to soups, risottos, eat it on its own, add it to smoothies. Spinach is very sandy when bought fresh and needs to be cleaned well. You can also buy it frozen. I use it in my recipe for veggie burgers. Broccoli Rob. I think of this as a very Italian vegetable. <laughs> You'll see it often on Italian restaurant menus as rapini. You can eat the leaves, the buds, and the stems. The buds look similar to broccoli florets, but are much smaller. I love its earthy, nutty, bitter flavor. I like to keep broccoli rob simple by sauteing it with garlic and red pepper flakes. And last but not least, cabbage. 
It may be smelly, but it sure is good. <laughs> With its tightly packed heads, cabbage can look similar to iceberg lettuce, so be careful when you're shopping. <laughs> cabbage can be eaten raw in slaws, salads, and it's very good in tacos. Or you can boil it, roast it, pickle it, ferment it, or eat it on a hot dog as sauerkraut. It's one of the main ingredients in kimchi. As you can see, there are many healthy green choices on the market. So if you like kale, go ahead and eat it. But if you don't like kale, or if you just want to mix up your variety of greens, then this list is for you. I hope to see you soon. Thanks for joining me. Bye.